My workload went up from about, I don't know, 70 to 8 hours a week to probably 120. I go to sleep, I wake up, I work. I go to sleep, wake up, work, do that seven days a week. I'll have to do that for a while, so no choice. But I think once Twitter is set on the right path, I think it is a much easier thing to manage than SpaceX or Tesla. And I, 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 mean, I really understand the internet. I wrote software personally for 20 years. You know, I was one of the key people behind X.com, which became PayPal. And so I also, like, I'm aware of, like, a, I know how to make a, a way better PayPal. There's a product plan I wrote, which I wish I'd kept a copy of in July of 2000, where I thought it would be possible to make the most valuable financial institution in the world. And we're, we're going to execute that plan from 22 years ago, which amazingly no one has done. That's why part of why I think Twitter will be ultimately extremely valuable, because I'm going to execute the X.com game plan from 22 years ago with some improvements. Part of what I'm trying to achieve with this sort of enabling everyone to, to be payment verified with, with Twitter Blue is to try to get as many people payment verified as possible. It's only eight bucks a month, although for some people that are complaining about that. Part of it's revenue, part of it is payment authentication because w there is a huge problem with spam and, and bots and trolls on, on Twitter and organizations trying to manipulate pu a public opinion um, and just, just generally making the system worse. But I think that there is an answer to that, which is to, to get um, as many uh, regular users of Twitter to um, be a, a subscriber for $8 a month. And you'll get a lot more than just the blue check mark for $8 a month, because now we can afford long form video, long, for, long audio, pod podcasts, and we can also start sharing revenue with, with content creators, which is essential. I mean, right now, you see, if you're on Twitter, you'll, you'll see a lot of links posted to YouTube and, and TikTok. Um, and that's because, at least until now, Twitter has not even given them enough video length to post their video. Um, and then they give the, the content creators no means of monetizing the video. So we're going to change that rapidly um, at Twitter. It's going to be transformative. But, but if we can get enough verified users, and we're going to prioritize um, Twitter search, replies, uh, mentions, um, by verified users first. So the, if, if you're payment verified with blue checkmark, then you're pre-prioritized. The, the point of this is to make crime not to pay. Because right now, to create a, a bot on Twitter costs less than a penny. The, the, the cost of crime is so cheap, and that's part of why crime um, and, and hateful conduct pays. But if somebody risks losing even eight bucks, they, 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 or you, you, it's, it's too expensive to now have a, a 100,000 fake accounts because they have to spend $800,000 a month as opposed to, you know, $800 a month. So, and then we also, since we're using payment authentication, uh, we're, we're piggybacking on the authentication system of the payment system, and we're also piggybacking off of uh, Apple's authentication system, which is another layer of security. So the, the, the net effect will be, over time, that the, the verified users will be pretty much always be at the top of of comments and search, and you won't really see, you'll have to scroll far to see the unverified uh, users, which will be the bots and, and trolls and whatnot. And uh, this is sort of analogous to um, w uh, Google search. Like, um, if you go to page eight of Google search, th there will be a ton of scams and, and, and stuff, you know, call it page eight, page nine, something like that. And the, but the thing is that Google search results are so good for page one that you never go to page eight. And, and, and then crime stops paying and then they stop trying to, to do all these things. So, I mean, the joke is like, what's the best place to hide a dead body would be the second page of Google search results. To be frank, uh, Twitter was having pretty serious revenue challenges and cost challenges um, before the acquisition talks started. And a any company that is dependent on advertising um, has had a hard time. So uh, if you look at, say, Snap uh, or Google, Facebook, whatnot, they've all had a difficult time with uh, advertising revenue dropping. And then we're also going to obviously make Twitter just a way better system. If a social media company is not taking steps to make it positive to be on that social platform, then, then people won't come or they'll leave. So you speak of sort of anti-Semitism or racism or anything like that. Who's going to stay on a platform if, if that's prevalent? Apart from its inherent wrongness, if who's going to stay on the platform? It needs to be something where 
like our, our goal with, with Twitter is like, how do we get 80% of America? Maybe not like the sort of far left and the far right, but, but and maybe we don't want them necessarily. How do we get 80% of the public to join a digital town square and voice their opinion and, ex and exchange ideas and maybe once in a while change their minds? But I, I th I'm confident we can satisfy, like, I don't know, 80% of America, 80% of the world, um, and, but maybe not the most, the 10% most extreme of, of, of either side. And I, I would count that as a, a great outcome. And I think, it, I think it is important to have sort of a, a, a digital town square where people feel comfortable talking. I, and I also think it's, it's like one of the things that's important is to be able to, to sort of decide what kind of experience you want to have on Twitter. Because, you know, some people was, might say, okay, like, I want the... Like if this was a radio station, I want this, the easy listening, smooth jazz. So you should be able to have that setting for Twitter. And, and, uh, and then some people might say, say like, no, I want heavy metal thrash. Then you don't mind someone saying mean things to you, you know, within the context of the law. Um, and you don't mind engaging in, in vigorous arguments on Twitter and that kind of thing. But you should be able to kind of like pick your preference and decide if, if you want sort of full contact battle or, or, or do you want like, no, I just want to look at puppies and flowers and nice landscapes and stuff.